Good morning. It's Thursday. Oh, yes. It is It is a magical day in the neighborhood. Why? Because we're here with you to talk about stuff and things. My name is Sean Shapiro. I am a police constable with the Toronto Police Service, and you're watching Ask a Traffic Cop, that show on the internet where we answer your traffic and police questions. And today I've got a guest. He's the same guest as yesterday. He's the same guest as tomorrow. He's a guest named Scott Marshall. He is the safe driver, and he's with Truba Cars. And we are just promoting, aside from doing our regular show, promoting Friday's extra event. So we're doing a special show just for new drivers, and I want you to join us if you're a new driver. That's where we get to focus on all the new driver questions. Yeah, because there's old driver questions and, and, and not so old driver questions, but we have, we have driver questions of all uh, sorts, all experience levels. And the new, new drivers are the one that the special episode is for. I've got my water, I've got everything. I think I'm all set. I think we're all set to go. A couple of things before we bring Scott in. I know he's anxious to, uh, uh, to chat with you all, but we have that thing that I do. First of all, I want to tell you how to connect with us so you can actually ask us questions. We're currently broadcasting on TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Kick. But we're also on Twitter. And I say, and also, because Twitter cannot uh, send us messages. We can, we see you, or sorry, you see us, but we don't see you. Every other platform allows us to actually engage with you and get questions so we can answer you because that's what this show is all about. If you don't ask us questions, we talk about donuts. It just, it's the way it seems to be. Sometimes movies or chicken wings. Anyway, uh, please ask us questions because that's how this works. It's a show for you, completely and entirely guided by you, Eh, with a little bit of me, and sometimes Scott. Uh, Good morning to my wife, Leah Wife, who is going to be in the chat today. She's helping out because we don't have a producer again, uh, because JD's on vacation, because he thinks there's things more important than work. I don't know how that works. But, uh, but my wife is in the chat on TikTok, and she's taking questions from you there and placing them here so I can see them. Because it's different windows. That's why I'm motioning with my hands. Uh, if, you're, <laughs> if you're wondering, uh, if you put a cue in front of your question, that will assist us in identifying your question as a question as opposed to just the banter that takes place all so often. We have a very busy chat. And we had a very busy chat overnight. Why? Because we aired the replay of, of yesterday's episode 10 times. So it was like 14 and a half hours of play. Uh, like 30,000 people watched it. It was awesome. Lots of engagement. I was in the chat for a lot of the night in and out. And a lot of our very magical friends, the folks that are here every single day that know the stuff, were engaging in the, in the chat as well. It was very nice to see. It warms my heart that we have such a great community. Uh, so a lot of people from a lot of places got uh, a lot of love uh, by way of our replay event. Maybe we'll do that again. We've done it twice. First day, I think we did it for four hours. Second time, uh, for 14 hours. Slight difference. Um, But I'd love to know if you think that's a good thing, if we should keep doing it. Uh, Good morning to Big Jeff Fresh, who says, well, hello there. And Stephen Bell says, hi, good morning. Happy Canada Day. Canada Day? I don't know why I'm uh, stuttering with the day today. Uh, But hi, good morning. Happy Canada Day. I won't be on tomorrow. I will be He will be busy. Okay, we'll miss you. Uh, but we will be here, and of course, we have the replays. All of our episodes are available on YouTube in our playlists, and uh, and and even as a podcast, if you're so inclined. Uh, we also have a podcast that is not the Ask a Traffic Cap a Cop uh, show. It is the uh, TPS Traffic Jam, which is where we have interview e kind of situations. And uh, <laughs> Big Jeff Fresh acknowledging the extra long replay. AJ the Awesome, uh, good morning to you too. And, and, and what is the medical update? Are you are you now back to normal? Are your ribs still sore? That's the big question. Okay, uh, I see uh, lots of com- lots of questions coming in from TikTok, but we have one more order of business before we bring in uh, the most magical of guests, and uh, that's the Scott Marshall from uh, from Safe Driver. Well, he's the Safe Driver from Trooper Cars. But first, I want to talk to you about Vision Zero. Vision Zero is uh, an enforcement group. Well, no, let me rephrase. Vision Zero is a concept about traffic safety. It's about changing road designs. It's about education and enforcement, all with the goal of reducing the number of people who are seriously injured and killed on our roads to nil, to zero. Vision Zero, so you get it? Vision Zero enforcement team, often referred to as VZET, well, that's our enforcement group that goes out every single day to try and change driver behavior. They do it one ticket at a time. No hugs are given. And today they're focused on 
well, the big four, which is what they're always focused on, that's speeding, aggressive driving, distracted driving, and impaired driving. They are focused in two particular divisions, 31 and 43, uh, and because nobody knows what that means, that's Black Creek, Humber, Mead, Glenfield, Downsview, Bendale, Woburn, Highland Creek, West Hill, Guildwood, those are neighborhoods where real people live, work, and play and deserve to be safe, in case you were wondering. And for those who want to know why we're telling you where we're going to be, because it's, it's, it's for the benefit of people who live there. They want to know when we're out there so we, they can feel safe knowing that police officers are there to make their communities safer. That's exactly what we do. Uh, they do really great work, and I am proud to have them as part of the team. Yeah. Now, with no further ado, and before we get into all of your questions, which, of course, we will be getting into because that's what we're all about, I want to bring Scott to the screen. Good morning. No, oh, we lost your sound. We had sound when we tested. The sound has gone away. I'm going to, uh, I'll put you in the back. Let me know. Give me the thumbs up when you're ready to go because I, I, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, I put you in the background for a sec so you can do some testing. We had it all working out, and that's the wonderful thing about computers. They, they work, and then they don't. <laughs> so, uh, good morning to Zombie, who's dropped in. And uh, we, we, uh, we look forward to some high-quality dad jokes. Speaking of dad jokes, if you have dad jokes, feel free to put them in the chat. I will bring them up at the end of the show, or maybe if it's really good, I'll bring it up uh, whenever uh, I read it because sometimes I can't help myself. I laugh out loud, and I don't put LOL on the screen. All right, uh, Scott, you want to give it another shot? I don't see you showing me levels, but we'll try. How are we doing? No, we got no audio. That's very strange. <laughs> Putting you in the background again. Uh, we'll do a couple of questions, and we'll come back to you. So just uh, I'll let you do your thing and, and try and... Tech support is on vacation now. It's, uh, uh, like I said, we test things before the show, before we go live. And we're working perfectly. And then I said, can you, can, I asked them to bring headphones in, and I, and I broke everything. Are we trying? Do we want to try again? You might, it, might even work, uh, it might even be worth reloading your page if it was working and it stopped working. Okay. Oh, oh, I hear you. You hear me now. I hear you now. All right. So I brought in my other mic. Okay. I don't know what happened because it was working, then it didn't work, and now we're moving on. We're not going to dwell on, on uh, Mikey no work, but it now yes. works. So it was good. Good morning. So we're good. Good morning again. <laughs> yes, two days in a row. If you missed yesterday's show, uh, I, I mentioned the fact that Scott was my very first ever guest live on any kind of stream anywhere. And then you became a regular guest, like I think it was every Thursday or every Friday, and depending on the schedule. It was every Friday. Friday. It was a celebratory Friday uh, with mm -hmm. Scott. And what, what, what did we have? actually, there was a term uh, for, for uh, what, there was, a, there was a, a line. I don't remember it now, but that'll come to me later when it, when it no longer is relevant. Yeah. Something about Scott. Scott's, I don't remember. There was something about Scott. And, I don't and, remember yeah. now. I barely remember we'll yesterday. To, yeah, it's a problem. I, I will have to uh, go watch old episodes, which are, by the way, available and forever available on YouTube. We're happy to say that you can watch two years of our daily shows. Uh, and they're all amazing, of course, although not possibly not as relevant. Uh, well, your segments are because it's, it's that, that forever safety stuff, which is what we're talking about today. We want to promote the fact that we're going to be on a special episode uh, where we go live at 1130 this coming Friday, which is tomorrow. And we'll be doing a focused show all about new drivers. So, you know, we, this show is all yeah. about driver questions and law questions and you know how fast can I go over the speed limit and can I put tinted windows but we want to focus on new driver stuff so what does that what does that mean as a as a true car safe driver well you know I you know for since you started doing the the, the live shows and things like that uh, I I always seen so many questions about you know the g1 written test the g2 test the g test and I, I think doing this um, talk about and, and providing answers for the, um, uh, the the new driver, the new driver isn't necessarily someone who's just still learning, but it is. I mean, it's part of that, but it's also someone who just doesn't have a lot of experience yet, and they, and they may have some questions and things like that. So, um, yesterday on the Truby Cars uh, podcast, I used one of the questions that came up yesterday. Um, uh, we had a new follower on our Truby Cars TikTok, and he asked a question. He was the dad of a new driver. 
And so it's not just the, the new driver. Sometimes it's the parents of the new drivers of, you know, what can I do to, to, to survive in the car <laughs> with my novice driver and, and, and things like that. So, so we love questions. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I saw earlier, I, I've got TikTok open as well. And someone had asked the question is, is the G2 scary? Um, well, it really depends on, on the training that you've had and, uh, and, and the advice. And, and one of the things is that, you know, whether or not you should let a parent teach you how to drive, but you know, they might teach you their bad habits, things like that. So you want to take this seriously because driving is a serious thing. It can be a lot of fun, but you know, you can get injured you can get hurt and, or, or worse and, and same with other people. For sure. And we've so, been getting questions all night because we well, replayed yesterday's episode a number of times and there was questions about, uh, is the G class or the, was it the G test that was temporarily changed? Is that still an abbreviated or, or modified test? It still is. Um, they're doing it like a, you know, a month or two at a time and, and deciding whether or not it's, it's going to uh, cleaning up the backlog that, that, that the COVID cancellations caused. Um, so right now it, the, the G test is considered the highway test. Um, and so you, you'll be merging on and off uh, a couple of times and uh, not a lot of residential streets. Okay. And no low speed skills, really, other than getting back into the parking lot. And, and I think the theory was that these are redundant because you do it for your G2. So now we're going to focus on the stuff that you haven't done. But uh, I understand it's still temporary and should come back to the full test at some point. Yeah, that's that's the rumor out there. Uh, uh, and, and you're right, you know, if you're able to pass the low speed skills and uh, that now and moving on to the other one. And it, it's a little bit shorter to try to get more tests each day. It, it is interesting. And we, oh, there's uh, so many things. If you're watching right now and you've got a question specific to new drivers, um, we've got Scott for a couple more minutes before we uh, we move on with the regular show. But Scott will be back tomorrow for uh, the 10 o'clock show to do another segment. Sorry, I, and also, I, lost, I lost your sound for a second there, Sean. Yeah, we're seeing to having some connectivity issues today because you you were you were you get a bit of a delay when we speak yeah. to you, and then we get a bit of a delay until we get back. So don't know what that is, but we'll uh, we'll work it out. Um, let's see here. We just seeing if there's any questions that are for you now, uh, and and again the the reason we're you're on is not only to answer a couple questions, but to uh, promo the segment for Friday at eleven thirty. So. I put it in your calendar. Of course, it'll be available for replay, but it's always more fun if you're there asking questions live. And uh, we'll, we'll recap some of the things we talk about here and then, you know, right. like that. Um, I'm looking for, a, here's a question that uh, AJ the Awesome uh, writes, because we already talked about the, uh, is the G2 scary? Uh, not a new driver, but I'm going to be supervising and teaching my girlfriend. Any advice what to talk about or what to avoid? I don't want to be harsh, but I want to be safe. Uh, yeah, set up the, the, first of all, before you even begin, let them know that, you know, you're going to be a supervising driver, uh, that, you know, shouldn't take comments back and forth personally because it can affect your relationship. You know, when I taught my kids, I have four of them. Uh, I said, when we're in the car, I'm your instructor. I'm not dad and, and that type of thing. Uh, promote the positive. Uh, if you're, um, supervising someone remember you're not necessarily teaching them you know let the driving instructor do that you're there to help them practice and to be safe you're another set of eyes really and so if they start to move and there's a vehicle coming you just want to say stop right set up the ground rules if i say stop stop if i say go go don't don't question it just do it first and ask after if you have to is there anything that we can take medication wise to get rid of the stress of supervising a new driver? Cause that there's, there is the, the, the belief or the, uh, in, in, what's sort of the instinct to want to grab the steering wheel or, or scream really loud. What, what do you suggest? <laughs> um, I, I think as a demeanor, you know, you're going to know whether or not you, you have the right demeanor to be a supervising driver, but only have them do things that they have an understanding, not necessarily that they're good at, but they understand it. Um, you know, it, someone would say to me, you know, I'm, I'm getting my, my, my son, my daughter to practice their turns. Well, you know what, try something different because they just began, they had one lesson uh, and they don't understand. So practicing, practicing something you don't understand, you're not going to get any good at it. You have to know the steps. 
Um, so have them, until they get an understanding of steering and braking acceleration, go into a parking lot where like a big empty one, get the feel of the gas and brake, get a feel of the steering wheel and, and let a couple of lessons go by before you tackle, you know, main roads, residential streets, things like that. Building blocks, start somewhere, um, move up slowly. That's that's right. Choose a time of day that is calm. Choose an area of your community that's that's quiet. And uh, from that point on, then you you can grow and and talk to them about, you know, how you feeling right now? Are you OK right now? And and hopefully they're honest with you and, and they'll tell you if they're not feeling well, that you can always pull over, take a breather or even change seats and drive them back. I, ha I have it on good authority that having a husband that is a motor or traffic officer is a, a source of anxiety for a new driver, uh, especially if they're your supervisor. Just saying. Yeah, um, one of the seasons, I think it was season two of Canada's Worst Driver, we had the same similar thing where it was it was a, a, a traffic cop in a show was uh, the passenger with, with his wife and he was barking out orders that <laughs> she didn't need or really want. So, you know, sometimes that backseat driver's in the front seat and uh, it, it can be intimidating, I'm sure. I don't think I was that bad, but apparently it doesn't matter. I'm just that intimidating. Um, that's awesome. It doesn't well, matter. I'm, 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 <laughs> it doesn't. I'm scrolling here looking for any other specific uh, stuff. So in, in lieu of a question specific to new drivers, uh, there is a... Uh, you know, I, I think just to, to talk about what we're going to talk about. So I guess we'll start at the, at the beginning and, 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 and cover all the, the, the bits and pieces of what you need to know uh, but when you're planning to be a new driver and then sort of once you get started and we'll see where it goes. But I, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I am too. And, uh, you know, our, our Truby Cars social media, you can, you can see a lot of great tips for, for new drivers on our TikTok account, which is uh, at Truby Cars and also Instagram and uh, Facebook and, and Twitter. And actually that's a great, so, a great suggestion uh, for anyone who's getting ready to watch the show. If you're looking for, you know, maybe look at the content, see if there's any questions that come up because of the content. Uh, and that'll give us some really good stuff to, uh, to discuss when we're actually in that live at 1130 on Friday, which is tomorrow, the 30th, it's Friday, and it's the it's part two, because we're going to do, I'm going to be on for an it's hour. Well, I guess we'll bring you in for, for 10 or 15 again, and then we will go at 11.30 right into new drivers all day long. Uh, oh, here, this is a, a question that is a G1. Actually, there's two. Now there's two questions. Uh, okay. First is from Stephen Bell. My cousin has a G1, and he, for some reason, doesn't like to drive. It's a comment, not a question, but it's still valid, uh, and we can talk about that. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's a rite of passage. People think, okay, you're, you're 16. It's, it's time to drive. It's actually a mentality thing. It's, it's like, don't drive because you're of age to drive because you want to. And uh, I had a student years back who didn't really seem into it after like on the third lesson. And I asked them, you know, why are you driving? Why do you want to learn driving? He said, I'm 16. I said, that's not a reason. So we paused the lessons for, for a little while and, and came back when he was ready. And he really wanted to learn at that point. I personally love the fact that, I mean, I said it yesterday, it, it's, it's common knowledge. I really wanted to be a driver and I was prepared mentally for it. I was, it, it's all I wanted to do it was freedom for me. But nowadays there's many people who wait thirties and forties into their, into that age group before they even consider it because they don't need to. We've got such great infrastructure in Toronto. There's just no need, or maybe they, they walk to work. And I got to tell you, if I wasn't driving and I could save a thousand dollars a month, what could you do with a thousand dollars a month? That's that's a that's a party in a in a wallet. Well, that's the thing too, and 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 you know, the last few years, more people who who are in the workforce are able to work from home, uh, so they don't need the vehicle as often. And we also have um, other ways to get around, whether it's the infrastructure or Uber. Uh, those are the things that that if you need to get to a place or get home from a place, or, other than driving, there are other options. And, um, you know, but part of it is, is your decision. And I see here that, um, you know, someone was bullied into, into learning to drive, but part of that is you have to really want to do it. So, and, and the follow-up is that she's still nervous at it and she's, she's 30. Uh, and is that something that you can work on? Uh, we talked about it briefly about anxiety, but if, if you were pushed into it, you were never really ready. Um, 
I wondered, uh, Zombie, did you get lessons? Uh, and would lessons now help? Yeah, they, they, they do. Uh, part of it is, you know, the old saying is you don't know what you don't know. And it uh, depends on, on what you were taught. You, you've passed the, the, the road test and, and, and things like that. But, um, and you're a licensed driver, but you're just not comfortable. So going out with a professional instructor, uh, and we can set that up at Truby Cars just by going to our site and, and doing that. And just getting a few refresher lessons of areas of, that you have the, the most concern with. And Truby Cars, we're not, just for people who are out there, we're, we're not a driving school, but we do curriculum and we, we promote people who want to learn how to drive and we help them get to that level of comfort um, by by checking us out you'll see that we do that yeah so just to recap uh, as you said trooper cars doesn't uh, isn't a driving school you don't teach directly but you do create the curriculum and you can refer them to people uh, in the areas that they're in because you're you, you're like a directory of all driving instructors yeah yeah we, and we have the quality schools that that, that join up with us um, and they do help people who do have a license but just don't have the confidence or do have some anxiety here's a question from radic on youtube good morning does my insurance provider have to be informed that a new driver with a g1 permit will be using my car to drive while i supervise no uh they don't need to do that uh because you're you're insured the vehicle's insured um and they're with you that that you know, and you're with them that's fine and, and a g1 driver does not need insurance on a vehicle so and when my people have when my wife got her g1 i called because i didn't know and they said we'll take the information but we don't actually charge you anything it's not required uh and when the, you know she gets her g2 then you call back up and at that point because they live we, we live together because we're married uh you know at that point because we live together uh they do get at it and it, then there would be a nominal fee and uh some insurance companies make it a requirement that like, they won't insure a g2 driver if they live with you unless they're on a policy Yeah, so I mean, what, there's there's nothing wrong with informing your insurance company. Um, like you said, that they might take information or they might just say, we don't need it. So that, then you're fine. This is having someone in a driving instructor's car. Um, we're not informing our, our carrier that, that we have, you know, uh, John Doe and, and, and Pete Moss and Barb Wire and all our other students. Right. Those I like Barb Wire. Good, good, good student. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it, it's it's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, for anyone who's watching, uh, just a reminder, you can get Scott Marshall actually on all sorts of platforms and on your podcasts, because now you have two of them. You have the Safe Driver and Trooper Cars. Uh, but uh, at Safe Driver, at Trooper Cars, on TikTok. And if you Google you, Scott Marshall, you'll see all sorts of stuff and maybe even find some old episodes of uh, Canada's Worst Driver where you're, uh, you're in. Are those on YouTube? Yeah, they're they're all over the interweb, and uh, yeah, it's I don't look like I do now, and and uh, I think I'm I'm happy about that. <laughs> right on. Well, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll do this again, and then I'm really stoked about our episode 11:30 um, a.m. on what's well, Eastern time, uh, where we do this all the whole episode, all for new drivers. Share this, please. Uh, let people know. Uh, let your friends, your family, anyone who might benefit from having the information that Scott has to offer. So uh, looking forward to that. I'll see you tomorrow morning. You bet, have a great day. You too, be well, take care. Okay, and uh, now back to the regular scheduled program where we answer your traffic and police questions. If you're new to the channel, if you don't know who I am, my name is Sean Shapiro, I'm a police officer with the Toronto Police Service, and I go live on social media to answer your questions. It's all about you uh, to and to, to well, and, and where do we go? What platforms are we on? Well, obviously, wherever you're watching me right now, we're there, but we're also on other platforms. We're on TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, kick and twitter but on twitter you can't ask us questions so please go to trafficcop.ca where you get links to all of our other social media but you can also just search hashtag ask, ask a traffic cop it works too um we have we have a great show for you why because you decide what we talk about it's always great because it's all about you now we're going to go into the questions that have been streaming in this one came in uh, this morning, what time did they come in this morning i don't know it was after 10 04 so let's uh, let's jump right into it uh we have is it okay to full stop and turn right when it's safe to do so? That's a question coming in from TikTok. My wife actually knows the answer to this question, but uh, you'll see her. Uh, it appears that she is asking all of the questions. It is not. She is simply taking your question from TikTok and bringing it over. So uh, that's exactly how it works for, for a right on red. If you are at an intersection that allows right turns, in other words, you're in Ontario and there's no sign preventing it, you would 
stop when you approach a red light, as you are required to by law, and only when it's safe to do so, make your right turn. So you're looking for pedestrians, you're looking for vehicles, you're doing the lawful thing to do. And if you don't feel safe doing it, don't do it. Uh, a lot of people are confused. They just drive right through, and they are, they're getting tickets. They're getting, uh, they're getting tickets. That's what happens if you don't stop for a, right, a, a red light on a red turn. A red turn, red light on a red, a right light on a red turn. Boy, how can I, uh, yeah, <laughs> red light. You got to stop, make your right turn. Okay, moving on so I stop tripping over my tongue. What are the bylaws on longboards? Well, a longboard is a skateboard, is a toy. It's not a lot on the road. Uh, you can be charged for it. You can be charged for using one on a sidewalk if you're causing problems for the people on the sidewalk. But skateboards are not supposed to be on the road. If it's an electric longboard, now you're talking about other things. It's a motor vehicle. Uh, you are responsible for its operation. And it is a problem because there's a lot of people who can do 40 miles an hour on a longboard with a motor on it. Uh, gas powered is obviously going to be a motor vehicle. The electric ones, well, they're motorized vehicles and they're in this weird place, but you can certainly be charged for using them on the road. Uh, okay. AJ the Awesome says, I'm good, but still hurts to breathe. What can you do, you know? Still making the best of a bad situation. Right on. Okay. We, uh, a question about the show. Is all your police equipment yours, or does it belong to the department government? Keep up the great work. Best public relations officer ever. That's a good hashtag. I like that. Uh, I don't know if you mean like the show equipment or if you mean police equipment. So with the Toronto Police Service and many police services in Ontario, if not Canada as well, um, police equipment like our, our belts, our, our uniforms, all that stuff is issued by the Toronto Police or the police service in question, and uh, it, it is their property. It's their property. So if you retire, you return all of it. There's lists of things that you have to give back, and it's basically everything. Uh, I provide my own underwear and socks, I'll have you know, uh, but everything else is pretty much issued. If you were talking about the equipment that you see here, when I started the show, it was actually my own equipment, and uh, I, have, uh, I have now got police-issued equipment that is all being used to produce this magic uh, because they really support what we do here, and this is, uh, is awesome. It's awesome that we can do that. So thank you, AJ. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Why are... Oh, here's a question. I like this. Why are cops strict on teenagers? I got stopped with going 31 kilometers over the speed limit and four points. Kind of want to read that again. Why are cops strict on teenagers? I got stopped going 31 kilometers over the speed limit and four, because you were going 31 kilometers over the speed limit. That's why you got stopped. This doesn't matter if you were, uh, you know, uh, 16 or 30 or 40. You're not allowed to speed. It's against the law. You, you, I question my, my I question my sanity sometimes. You, it, it's not just strict with, with uh, teenagers. It's strict with drivers because you're driving a giant vehicle capable of doing harm. And, and 31 kilometers an hour, they say that every five kilometers over the posted speed limit, you double your chances of becoming involved in a collision. 31 kilometers over the speed limit. Yeah, like six times. Yeah, okay. Well, actually, no, it's you compounded. It's more than six times over um, yeah, bad. Don't do that. Don't speed. I don't speed. People say that's baloney. You got it. You must speed. Everyone speeds. I don't speed, and I have video evidence to prove it. I actually record all my sessions when I drive because I'm a, I'm a geek looking for good content. So uh, I have a constantly on dash camera, and I am doing the speed limit or two kilometers below because my uh, cruise control is increments of two kilometers. But I am always amazed at the people passing by and sometimes at ridiculous speeds. And I, uh, the really good stuff, I turn into content for this channel. But it is, um, it's, it's kind of sad that so many people speed, because it just shows that people have lost respect for the law, and and society. They don't care, because when you speed, you put others at risk. It's not just about you. you you're actually putting lives at risk. And when you crash and you not only ruin people's day because it's not fun to be in a crash and ruin your vehicle and and have you know months of dealing with car repair, if not medical treatment, people just don't care because they're important and they have to get to where they're going and they want to be there first. And if you do the math on how long it takes to get to work or play or whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, if you're traveling 20 kilometers an hour, uh, 20 kilometers away from your, your, your starting point and you, you figure you're going to speed to get there faster, do the math to figure out what 20 kilometers or 31 kilometers in that situation really gets you. Not much. It's, it's, it's negligible but you, you decide to put everyone at risk instead. If, I'm, if it sounds like I'm trying to guilt people into not speeding, I am. 
It's about educating. It's about talking about stuff that's important to talk about. And uh, following the rules, the rules that were designed to keep people safe is important. People say, well, the roads were designed to go faster and we just reduced the speed on highways because of uh, gas uh, shortages. And so what? It doesn't matter why they were slow. It's slow down. Uh, we made uh, streets, uh, the speed limits on streets, on surface streets in city of Toronto slower uh, a couple of years ago. It was last year, two years. We, we've got speed limits in areas as low as 30 kilometers an hour. I had someone call in from the Jerry Agar show and say, well, my car can't go 30 kilometers an hour. It's, it's very difficult to keep it. There's something wrong with your car if you can't do a sustained 30 kilometers an hour. And people say, it's impossible. It's just about keeping control of your little footsie and not pressing that gas pedal too much. If I sound preachy, it's because I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be condescending. Okay, we're moving on because I could just talk about this. It, it really bugs me, the speed thing. But it bugs me when people break any rule. You want to race? You want to go fast? Take it to the track. Okay. Zombie says, yeah, it's not just me. Need some jad, dad joke support. Right on. Uh, dad jokes, we read them at the end, usually when I don't forget. And uh, we need more. So if you've got good ones, I'm, I've got a deck of them. So if you don't have them, we can certainly... Uh, refer to my deck. But I, I love the ones that are uh, being provided by you. Does anyone having a problem? Are you frozen on uh, what's going on here? I seem the stream might be having problems. Stand by. I want to do a little test here. I refresh my screen because it looks as though TikTok may be frozen. Um, well, that's not good. Hang on a second. Yeah, there's something going on here. Hopefully. Oh, still, things are still going. Oh, no, it might have just been on my end. Of course, now we're getting a loop. I don't want to hear myself. Okay, I seem to have muted myself. I don't know, weird stuff going on there. Let me know if you're having any problems. Don't, apparently Harmony says TikTok is fine on this end. Good. It may just be a stuff and things on this side. Cool. Have you ever been uh, considering? Have you ever considered? Been considering? Considering? Considered? I don't know. Have you ever considered becoming a member of the Toronto Police Service or any police service? Well, guess what? We are hiring. If you are considering a job in law enforcement, and it doesn't have to be a police officer. We have all sorts of different jobs that are, or careers that you could look into police constable, special constable, parking enforcement officer, communications operator. Now, police constable's uniform, it's a police officer, you're a cop. Special constable doesn't carry a firearm, has different responsibilities, but does a great job in supporting and doing important work in the city of Toronto. Parking enforcement officer is pretty self-explanatory. That's like Aaron Urquhart who goes out and keeps the city moving by holding drivers who choose to park their vehicles where they're not supposed to park. Well, they hold them accountable and they do amazing work. I, I saw she wrote night. She's not at her desk. I think like 98 tickets yesterday or the day before. Amazing. There's a lot of people who are choosing to, again, flagrantly just snub the law and park wherever the heck they want. And, you know, that impacts traffic and people who want to get home to their families. It's important, but nobody seems to see beyond their own needs. Uh, civilian roles. This is where, if you are interested in, in serving your community but don't want to be out in the, in the community uh, in a uniform capacity, I mean, that's not your thing. Uh, we're looking for, we have seven jobs posted. Senior writer in corporate communications, issues and media advisor, lead social media, developer in our digital team, senior programmer, solutions architect, and of course, communications operator. And if you didn't know what a communications operator was, those are the fine folks who wear headsets. Yes, they, they, they take calls from the community who are calling 911 or, or you know, and need to be uh, getting the assistance of police. So, or fire ambulance for that matter. And they're vital. They, 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 actually, all of these jobs are vital. Because without them, we don't get to do the things we do. Right? Someone has to tell us where to go and who to help. It's amazing. Thank you to those who support uniformed members. They don't get enough praise, and they deserve it. All right. Okay. Back to questions. It's 1034. Do you know where your children are? All right. Scrolling through. A compliment for my wife. Leo Wife is doing a great job. You have a great wife, Sean. Hard work and copy and paste from TikTok to YouTube. Well done. <laughs> That's awesome. I appreciate you. And I appreciate my wife because she's awesome. Uh, we, Michael wants to know about the authority of traffic wardens. I know crossing guard and construction flagman cannot make traffic go against regular signs or traffic control. 
Uh, does Warden have police authority for traffic direction? Yes. I want to say yes. I say I want to say yes because we've trained them for traffic, traffic direction. They are actually directing traffic as opposed to a flag person who is simply saying stop or go. All right, slower, slower stop. Uh, traffic wardens can actually direct traffic, and they are special constables with that authority. So yes. Uh, I've heard stories of of, uh, of of the training that goes in, and I gotta say, they're thrown into situations um, that are not for the faint of heart. Michael says, Fri "Happy Friday Eve." Yeah, can we say Friday Eve? It's Friday Junior, but Friday, yeah, maybe Friday, Friday Eve. Okay, what are the laws on intoxication on law on longboards? So if it's not a motorized, if it's not, if it's not anything other than muscular power, which is what the criminal code wants to describe a uh, motor vehicle as. So if you have a battery powered electric skateboard, that's a motor vehicle for the purposes of a longboard, for the purposes of the criminal code. So you would be operating a motor vehicle at that point, and I'd say you're arrestable easily uh, for that. E-bikes, you're arrestable. Uh, E-kick scooters, arrestable. Uh, one wheels, e e what are they called? The electric unicycles, arrestable under the criminal code for impaired operation, absolutely. Uh, but what are the rules? If you're public, drunken public, or public drunkenness is, 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 is something you can be charged with, regardless of if you're walking or not. If you're, a fall, if you're falling down inebriated, uh, that's a problem, but I think that's what we're talking about. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Why are you not pulling over big rig that are falling apart off the road? We have, well, first of all, we are not the only people doing this, but we have, a, we have a commercial vehicle inspection team. They are out there looking for just those things. We're specifically looking for those who are driving unsafe motor vehicles in the commercial space. But we, we look for all vehicles, trailers, everything. Uh, we also work in conjunction with the Ministry of Transportation who have officers who do the inspections as well. So the thing is we can't stop everybody and we can't stop them all the time. If we see it, we stop it. If we're doing inspections, we, we you, you pick a random one. And you do. Some vehicles look great, and you look underneath them. They have snapped leaf springs. Uh, they have these giant uh, you know defects. So when we catch them, we take them off the road. And someone was stopped last, last week uh, for an inspection, a dump truck driver, and they were drunk. They were arrested for impaired operation uh, and uh, charged with over uh, or 80 over impaired operation. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing that people get into these vehicles not only when they're unsafe, but when they're impaired. And they themselves, are, not just the vehicle's unsafe, but the, the person driving it is too. All right. Michael reminds that you only need to put Q in the question if you're on TikTok. It allows us to uh, differentiate conversation from question, whereas if you're on YouTube or any of the other platforms, we, we, we can see that ourselves. Okay. Billy Wang wants to know, if a car is parked on the bike lane but the driver is still there, can bikers ask them to move? Well, they're illegally parked, and if you're, if you're asking, can you, you can ask people anything. Can you direct them to move? No. Is there a consequence if they don't listen to you? No. Uh, that's for police and parking enforcement to deal with. And I would really suggest against engaging. I've seen videos of cyclists who want to share their knowledge and disdain for those who break the laws. And I, I, I have a problem with people who park in bike lanes. I'm not defending them. But what they do is they look really, really bad when they're yelling and screaming at, at motorists. And motorists then tend to get really upset and that turns into a road rage thing and suddenly people are getting arrested and assaulted and hurt. Uh, you're better off just, in my opinion, and only my opinion, moving along with your day as safe as you can. Uh, if you want to take a picture of it, send it to us, make a report. We'd love to send them a letter and explain to them why they're wrong. Um, if we, you know, if you want to call parking and make a report, they'll send an officer, but they probably won't be there by the time they get there, but we will respond and there's an online forum for doing it. In any case, Billy, you can tell them, but I would try and be as friendly as possible because not everybody likes being told and it could escalate and not in a good way. Why do, what is this? Why lady driver has cheaper insurance than male drivers? Well, my understanding, and it's my understanding, this has been forever, that whatever statistics are being done or whatever studies are being done to determine who is a higher risk, well, they've determined that it's men. Apparently, we do some really stupid stuff, whereas women do less stupid stuff. I think we all do stupid stuff. But uh, statistically, I think that men represent 
stupid stuff at a higher rate. Yes, that's the technical term for it. That's from all my years as an actuary. I'm not an actuary. But actuaries, and I have good friends who are actuaries, um, they look at stats, they do math and stuff. Okay, thoughts on drivers who put turn signals on and feel they have the right of way. Then what they... <laughs> This is all about entitlement and being unaware of your surroundings. This concept of right of way, whether you have it or not, is irrelevant because right of weight is what matters. Uh, and I say that with love because people just turn on their signals, don't do a shoulder check, don't look around, and aimlessly drive in the direction that they'd like to go. And often this results in people getting seriously injured or, or killed. And obviously it's wrong. You've got to be aware of your surroundings. You can't cut people off. You can't just throw your car wherever you want just because you signaled. It's not a magic wand. It is an information delivery device to tell other people what you're planning to do. That's it. Use caution, drive safely, drive properly, and, 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 and please be courteous and kind. I know it's not easy for everybody, but do your best. What are the five reasons why you can't do a U-turn? Are there only five reasons? Uh, I'll give you the ones that, I, that come to mind. Uh, U-turns are, are, in my opinion, a, the least safe turning motion you can do. And I've had driving instructors challenge me on it. We can talk about that tomorrow with Scott Marshall when he comes on the show again. But I think it's the least safe thing because it's, it's just a, it, it's an awkward thing that people do. So first off, if it's prohibited by sign, there's one. Uh, then if it is unsafe, there's two. Uh, if it's in front of a bridge, tunnel, viaduct, or railway, which is, brings up the six, uh, then it's uh, not lawful because those are prohibited areas. If you're in a, a, at a curve where there's restricted um, view or a, a, a crest of grade, so that brings up, what is that, we had seven, eight? Yeah, there's, there's more than five. But uh, if there's one I've missed, let me know. Oh, my wife, this, when we were discussing earlier <laughs> with Scott uh, about anxiety uh, as, a, uh, as a, someone being taught by a, a traffic cop, specifically me, my wife says, he's the worst. Sean gave me so much anxiety. It, was, it wasn't on purpose. I didn't want to. I, I, really, I really wanted my wife to, to, to drive. I still do. I, I, would, I, I, think it's, I, think, I think it's freedom. I think driving is freedom. That's my thing. What speed do I need to slow down to when EV have lights on at the side of the road? What speed do I need to slow down when EV have lights on? At the side? What, what are we talking about EV? Electric vehicles? Is there emergency vehicles? Maybe it's emergency vehicles. Uh, for the slow down and move over, I don't think there's a specific speed that is, the, that, is, um, that is published in the HD. I don't think so. Maybe there is. I'll have to look at that. But... Ultimately, it's to significantly reduce your speed for the safety of the person. And if there's an available lane, if it's a multi-lane uh, lane, you want to give them a full lane. If there's multiple, multiple lanes available for you, move over a full lane, leaving a full lane empty beside them. These people are working to try and help someone. Uh, you may have a disabled vehicle, but that's, a, that, that's the deal. Lights on, it's emergency vehicles and tow trucks with their lights on at the side of the road working. Uh, give them at least a, a full lane if you can do it. Uh, if you can't, you have to move over as much as you can and slow down. But that, how much is, is appropriate? I don't know. Now I want to know, but I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Now I want to know. I want to know bad now. I want to know bad. <laughs> okay, hang on a second. Boom, boom, boom. Slow down, move over. Fail to slow down and proceed with caution. Upon approaching an emergency vehicle with its lamp and producing intermittent flashes of red light or red and blue light, or tow truck with its lamp producing intermittent flashes of amber light that is stopped on a highway, the driver of a vehicle traveling the same side of the highway shall slow down and proceed with caution, having due regard for the traffic on the condition, sorry, on and the condition of the highway and the weather to ensure the driver does not collide with the emergency vehicle or tow truck or endanger any person outside of the emergency vehicle or tow truck. Uh, it's 159 sub 2. I wonder if there's any further information if I dig down. Because that was just short form wording. Uh, 159.2. Let me scroll into the weeds here. Is there a specific speed 
I, I say nay. But I'm scanning. I don't see a specific speed. I don't see a percentage of speed. No. I don't think it's... So it's going to be what the officer interprets as safe and cautious. All right. Chris wants to know, outside of electronic devices, what is the most outrageous or strange distracted driving charge you have laid? Well, it's, but it's all electronic devices. See, distracted driving in Ontario is specifically dealing with handheld communication devices, handheld electronics, or sorry, handheld entertainment devices, or screens visible to driver. So the, those are the only distracted driving, specifically distracted driving. Have I charged people with eating a bowl of soup whilst holding their the steering wheel uh, with their knees because they had the bowl in one hand and a spoon in the other? Yeah, it's not distracted driving, even though I wish there was a more serious charge. It's careless driving. Excuse me. If a driver on a 400 series highway where the posted limit was 110 drives at 159, not exceeding 150 kilometers, sorry, not exceeding 50 kilometers over the speed limit, would they still face charges for stunt driving? Radic, thank you for asking this question, really. So the stunt driving laws say this. If you are traveling 50 kilometers over the posted limit that is 80 or above, then that is stunt driving. If you are traveling at 40 kilometers over the posted limit that is under 80, that too qualifies as stunt driving. But if you do anything over 150 kilometers anywhere, regardless of speed limit, it is stunt driving. So yes, uh, it would be stunt driving even if the speed limit was 110 kilometers an hour. Fantastic question. We've had it, but it's it's infrequently asked. Cr uh, okay. Do you have to turn right on a red if there's no sign? Have to? There's no have to. Uh, a right on a red is only if, like, if you may want to go straight through, and you may be waiting for the light to turn green. So there's no obligation to turn right on a red. Uh, if it's a right turn lane, it's probably expected of you but you're not obligated to because you have to determine that it's safe. If you determine that it's not safe, no one can tell you it is safe. So you don't have to. And people behind you can honk and be unhappy if they so wish. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's very funny. Uh, we, uh, I, I was not alone in, in questioning uh, you know, reality when they asked why we were picking on the teenagers for 30 kilometers, 31 kilometers over the posted speed limit. Okay. What are the posted speed limits in Ontario without posted speed limits? Usually when you enter a jurisdiction, they have their standards. It used to be 50 and 80 uh, pretty much everywhere, 50 and 80. Uh, but, you know, if you go into Toronto, it may now say 40. And I, I need to look at a sign to know what that is um, because I'm, I'm generally not in a situation where there's no signage. Uh, but 50 and 80 was historically. And we'll talk about that tomorrow with, with, uh, with Scott just to confirm what he teaches. What do we have here? Chris wants, oh, this is, what is the charge for eating a cheeseburger while driving or doing makeup? If you're eating a, uh, a cheeseburger and you're just so into that cheeseburger that you're no longer able to maintain your lane position, you're all over the road because mm -mm, good, that burger is good and distracting, it's, it's gonna be careless driving. Doing makeup, careless driving, not distracted driving, even though I think there should be a specific charge for both of those things. Uh, let's see here. Doo, doo, doo. And Michael was saying it's careless driving if a collision is caught. No, it can be careless driving without a collision. It doesn't, the collision doesn't have to take place for you to be careless in your, in your driving. It's driving without due care and attention. On Facebook, Stephen Bell saw a post that said a driver was doing 145 in a 60. I would arrest that person for dangerous. That's not just a stunt driving charge. Although it is definitely speeding and stunt driving, I would also arrest that person for dangerous operation, uh, for, for dangerous driving. Um, oddly enough, this is a question that's been popping up a lot. 
I don't know why. What happens if I get caught riding a dirt bike on the road? And I'm assuming you're not talking about BMX bikes. That is a situation where you would be charged for driving an off-road vehicle on roads. That's not legal. Driving an uninsured motor vehicle, so that's, uh, that's a charge under the uh, Compulsory Autom uh, Automobile Insurance Act. That is going to be um, five to $25,000 and up to six months in jail. No license plate, likely no license. It's a bad day at the office for you. If you, uh, if you want to support the magical people at Special Olympics Ontario, let me show you how you can do that. You can buy a ticket for a brand new Harley Davidson. Your chances go up. Your chances of winning go up if you buy a ticket because you cannot win if you do not buy. So one ticket is $20, three for 50, eight for 100. It is for a 2022 Harley Davidson Touring Street Glide that is brand new despite being a 2022. If you buy before July 5th, which is coming up really, really soon, well, you got to buy it before, what is it? Before July 5th, $500 Harley gift card if you buy before then. It, sorry, you might win at the early bird draw. The actual draw is in 33 days, 22 hours, 8 minutes, and 9 seconds. <laughs> if you don't know anything about the, uh, the, the magical folks at Special Olympics, Google them because they're pretty cool. Okay. What we got here? Are officers allowed to use police vehicles for personal reasons? Had a friend whose dad was an officer. I used to stress thinking he was following me only to find out he was dropping his kid off at school. Uh, different policies from different things. Some places have police cars that, like some people take their police cars home. Um, different agencies have different policies. And uh, I'm sure some would allow them to do things of that nature. But I don't know. We don't have take home cars here. But if we had to go buy a bottle of water, buy our lunch, that's personal. Uh, we were in our police car doing it. Uh, are we doing Christmas shopping? Probably not. You need a low speed, what is this? You need a low speed, high torque gear to start moving from a stop. Any motor vehicle is capable of 30 kilometers an hour. Okay. I don't know the context of that comment. Are you allowed to drive your own vehicle with lights and sirens? If you mean by you, if by you, you mean me, uh, then no. <laughs> Police cars can use lights and sirens. It's not my personal ride. Uh, if, if you means you and not me, then definitely not, because I'm assuming you're not a cop. Uh, what, <laughs> what are your thoughts on high-speed lanes or exclusive high-speed license for skilled drivers? I, it, it, it doesn't exist here. Do I think it should happen? No. I think slower is better. I think slower is safer. The biggest problem we have are speed differential. When one person is going fast over the speed limit and the other person is doing the lawful thing. Now, some would say the easy thing is just make everyone go faster. No, everyone needs to go slower. Slower is safer because you have more time to respond to changes up ahead. Going faster with skill and nice car does not make you avoid hitting the child crossing the street. Slowing down does because you see the child, you process that information in your brain and you take on a physical response, you, you do what you need to do to avoid, stop, etc. Okay. Joe Brown. As a new driver in Ontario, I just got to know today that there are speed cameras around and have driven around without knowing so what happens in if I have cut in some of those cameras. If you are a new driver and we're breaking the law and got caught by some of those cameras, um, then you're going to get tickets. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's how it works. D d don't break the law. Don't break the law, you don't get tickets. It's amazing. Uh, let's see here. Six minutes till the end of the show, just to let you know when the show comes to an end, when it hits that 11 o'clock mark, no further questions will be answered that come in after, but I will stay on long enough to fill out and respond to questions that have been asked. It's a thing that I'm trying out, and uh, it's not always possible, but today I don't have a meeting after this show, so I'm able to go a little long like I did yesterday. I've been going for about an hour and a half a day instead of our regular one hour. Um, first off, I do want to tell you that we have lots to share, and I mean that by we have lots of different ways to connect with us. And if you go to trafficcop.ca, this is what you'll see. It's my link tree. And on my link tree, we have links to, oh, look at that, supporting Special Olympics Ontario by buying a ticket for a Harley. You can do things like that if you visit these, this page. Wait, I gotta, I gotta switch where, where I am. This looks weird. Okay, ah, now it looks like I'm looking at the page. All right, so 
we have links to our social media. We have links to my social media, which oddly enough looks a lot like the social media um, for the other side of things. Guest appearances, you know, different shows that I've been on. And I still need to update that. There's more. But the most important and what I'm actually trying to draw your attention to is this area, the useful links page. Uh, you want to make a report for certain things, driving complaints in your neighborhood, specific uh, people with vehicles driving unsafely. You can do that there. You can also make other reports, but that's what I'm specifically referencing. Uh, if you're a cyclist or a, a pedestrian in the city of Toronto involved in a collision, you can start your report online, and then you can go to one of three collision reporting centers. And if you're driving and you say, well, what are you talking about? There's only two. Well, there's only two for cars. We have a collision reporting center here at Traffic Services, and it's for pedestrians and cyclists only because we want to make life easier for them. Okay. Renew your license plate. Oddly enough, you can do that online. It's free for most vehicles. Uh, and it, it, did I mention it's free for most vehicles? So don't get caught with an expired license plate. People say, well, what happens if I can't renew my license plate? Well, that means you probably have fines that you should take care of because that's what happens if you don't pay them. Uh, driver's license check. Who would need to check the status of a license? Well, if you're loaning your motor vehicle to anybody, you want to make sure they're licensed because if you give your vehicle to an unlicensed driver, you are responsible. You can get ticketed. So check to make sure they're valid. This is what rental car companies do. Cycling in the law. These are three, and then riding an e-bike and electric style or electric kick style scooters. That is, or those are, the resources you need to know about riding uh, bicycles and e-kick scooters in the city of Toronto. Well, actually, the e-bike and kick scooters are provincial documents, but they explain what the requirements are. And if you're currently uh, under current law, unless things change, I saw an article saying they might change. E-kick style scooters are prohibited in the city of Toronto. Lots of people use them, but they're against the law, and you could get a $90 ticket. If you have an illegal one that goes more than 24 kilometers an hour, you can get charged for unsafe motor vehicle and insurance problems, and it's a bad idea. Check to see if your car is stolen before you buy a vehicle. This is to check the VIN, uh, the vehicle identification number, to see if the RCMP has it on a list of stolen vehicles. If you're new to Canada or the province, you want to check to see what the requirements are for driving. Here is where it is. And just for fun, compliment a member. If you meet a police officer and they are awesome, you have the ability to, well, let the chief know. And I thought it was hilarious that that existed on a web form. I didn't know. I, then I put it on the page. And I have no idea if anyone's ever clicked that. But uh, I hope they do because we got a lot of cops in Toronto trying to make the world a better place. And if you think they did a great job, let the world know <laughs> by way of saying thank you. Um, obviously, it's a voluntary thing. How do the no registration sticker policies work now that it's cheaper to register? Well, actually, I just talked about this. It's free for most vehicles. However, it's $110 if it's not valid, and it's a problem. Okay, AJ the Awesome says, I always wanted to be a police officer. Sadly, I don't think I have the patience. People treating you guys horribly and forgetting that you're just human beings, but maybe time will tell. Yeah, you develop a thick skin very quickly when you're a police officer, uh, or you don't, and then you probably don't stay a police officer, but, um, you know, this is a uniform people don't like it. It's not a reflection of me, and if it is a me thing, um, too bad. <laughs> I, I don't really care. Uh, I, I mean, I, people have whatever reasons that motivate them to dislike the police, and that's, that's their own stuff. Uh, as long as you're professional while we're dealing with each other, I got no problem. You can hate me after I leave. Okay, Joel. What is this? Joel, you have a sign in Toronto. They are, I don't know what this is. Oh. Cool. We're talking about uh, uh, Joel was the one who said I may have, I, I didn't know there were cameras. There's signs. Uh, Michael's right. There's signs. Interesting question. Why should the good drivers get punished for driving fast properly because of terrible drivers? I don't. I don't. I don't think you understand how this works. Good drivers don't speed. Just because you've sped and not hit anything doesn't make you a good driver. It makes you lucky. A good driver follows the rules. A good driver who wants to go fast becomes a race car driver or goes and takes their vehicle to the track, but they don't put other people's lives at risk. We also drive with other people on the road, with pedestrians, with all sorts of folks, vulnerable road users. And you may think you're good right up until you lose control and kill somebody. So please, grow up. Good morning, Sean Chen. Who says good morning, Sean? Oh, we're, we're, we're approaching, we're 11 o'clock, which is the normal end time, but we're keeping this party going just till I run out of questions to answer and then we will call it a day. 
ish. Um, okay. What is the ticket for lane splitting? Well, it really depends on what you're doing. Lane splitting can come through a lot, a lot of different ways. Driving through stop traffic, driving through moving traffic, racing or weaving through uh, you know, lanes and being aggressive. The three options that uh, would likely be chosen for someone who's choosing to lane split would be careless driving at the very least, stunt driving if it was more aggressive or faster, or even dangerous driving, which is a criminal offense. Okay, Faticus, what is it? What is this? Oh, apparently the question button on Instagram isn't working. And I see people on Instagram. Uh, hello, Instagram people. But unfortunately, I am unable to. Well, I mean, it explains why I'm not getting any questions. I don't know why that's happening though. So if you're on Instagram, it's a perfect opportunity to move over and join us on another platform. Although today, we won't be looking for your questions because we're, we're out of question time. Okay. Ah, do you go to a collision reporting center if you were a witness but not involved? No, that's for the drivers and, and, and involved parties, but you would provide your information as a witness to one of those people, and then it would be noted in the, um, in the uh, what the heck is it called? Report, yes. Chances are if it's, if it's a witness situation, uh, it, it, it's a more serious collision. If, if we're getting to the point of witnesses. But it is good. You'd, you'd provide that information to the involved parties and uh, they'd tell police and if they needed to speak to you, they would. Um, usually that becomes more of an issue when it comes to serious injuries and uh, or serious collisions where police are taking reports and statements from you. Uh, La Platform says, hi, bro. Uh, let's see here. Daughter's friend caught driving by herself with only a learner's permit. All she got was a ticket. Is that normal? Well, yeah. Um, the ticket is a is, is a charge for G1 drive unaccompanied. And it's one of my favorite tickets because uh, that person was unlicensed officially, they, effectively, because they needed they, the condition of having a supervising driver, which means they have no insurance. That vehicle would not cover them in the event of a collision. Uh, but that ticket comes with a 30-day suspension on conviction. So if they go home and pay it or fight it or are found guilty, 30-day conviction. They do it again, 90-day uh, uh, suspension on conviction. They do it again, a hundred, no, uh, uh, kicked out of the driver program. They're out, they're gone. So 30, 90, kicked out. And I think that's where they deserve to be if they can't follow directions. That really bugs me. A lot of things bug me. Icy Rages says, your stream looks really good. Great job. Thank you very much, Icy Rages. Much appreciated. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Are parking enforcement officers armed officers? No, because I'm told that if we gave them guns, they'd be using them. Uh, they're, they're, they're attacked on a regular basis. They're assaulted. It's completely unacceptable. They're just doing their job, trying to keep traffic moving in the city of Toronto. They are the unsung heroes of the traffic world. So thank you to all parking enforcement officers. Uh, that's not just because Aaron is, you know, over there. <laughs> I said that parking officers are the unsung heroes of the traffic world. So I thank you to all parking officers. And I'm not just, she saluted me, not just because she's sitting there. We have, is it illegal for two semis to purpose, purposefully block traffic? Who stuck behind two on the 401 yesterday. Um, yeah, they shouldn't be blocking traffic, but they were possibly going the speed limit and no one else should be going faster than them. So were they doing, uh, you know, good work? Uh, they shouldn't be blocking anybody. You can't, you can't prevent people from passing intentionally. But that if that was the maximum speed, they're doing 105, they're, they're capped out at 105. What lane were they in? Maybe they should have been moved over. Preventing people from passing, not cool. But not cool to speed. So hopefully they were doing 80 and you just wanted to get up to the speed limit. If I get pulled over with pre-rolled cannabis in my car and the car absolutely stinks like cannabis, will it be cause for concern? Will I get searched? The only way you can transport marijuana in a motor vehicle is to have it sealed, sealed in its factory case. So you, you, you at least in the cabin of the car, in, in reach of the, uh, uh, the driver, if it's in the unsealed, it's gotta be in the back. And would it be cause for concern? If the vehicle stinks like marijuana, you cannot consume, you cannot smoke marijuana in a motor vehicle. So if it smells like you were smoking it in the car, yeah, that's a cause for concern. Would I be investigating to find out if you're impaired? 
uh, making observations to see if there's a, a potential criminal code arrest that needs to be met. Yeah, it's definitely a cause for concern. But if you're talking about unspent, unburnt uh, cannabis smell, uh, it's got to be away from the driver. It's got to be stored in the trunk. And obviously there's maximums as to what you can transport. Sean Chen, good morning, everyone. Did I not acknowledge you earlier? I think I thought I did. Okay. Are hands-free video calls allowed while driving? Absolutely not. No. Can't have that video screen visible to you, uh, which means the only thing that's legal is going to be your voice call. I have charged many a people having FaceTime calls or other communication video chats. Are pedestrians allowed on Highway 27? Young children have been walking down on the ramp with an adult. Uh, Highway 27, I don't think, is a controlled access highway, I don't think. But I don't know, so I I, I can't... uh, um, Is there no sidewalk? If you're driving a ramp, probably not. I thought Highway 7... I thought Highway 27 was a, a... They have stores and stoplights, and I think it's a street. Someone tell me what the story is on that. I don't go to Highway 27 often enough to tell you. <laughs> Michael wants to know if I was carrying a ticket book with uh, my wife when I was teaching her to drive. <laughs> All right. Uh, constant, consequences of driving without a license at the age of 18. Um, driving without a license, regardless of your age, will come with the ticket of, I think, $350. Uh, but you're, the, the real thing is that the driver, the person who owned the car who let you drive without a license is eligible to be charged on the Highway Traffic Act. If you took it without consent, without consent, you'd be looking at uh, take vehicle without consent charges, which happen to be criminal. Okay. Uh, how do the no plate sticker system work and how can you tell who is legal to drive? So because stickers, validation stickers are no longer required, uh, we run plates, and with the uh, introduction or, or the increased use of uh, automatic license plate readers, we just will get an alert if you're if you're not if you're not valid. But the deal is that uh, what is it? The deal is that uh, it is it is easy for us to check. We just run your plate, and I see that the that now I'm seeing questions popping up in uh, Instagram, uh, despite the fact that the question button isn't working. Uh, so, oh, here's a good question. What happens if an officer goes through a red light, no lights or siren on, and hits someone? They're, they're responsible for it. They're going to get charged, and they're going to get likely documented uh, and charged under the Police Services Act. Um, it will potentially, anyway, uh, documented for sure, uh, additional charges of the PSA, uh, possibly. It's not a good day. Uh, they're absolutely responsible in that situation. If you don't stop for a red well, they have to. So w- here's the deal with police. Uh, and, and going through intersections against the light with their emergency services, emergency equipment on, we still have to come to a complete stop prior to entering the intersection, so to fire an ambulance. Uh, if they don't, if they run, if they run in, they're not doing what they're supposed to do, they can be held responsible, even if they have their lights on. If they have their lights off, they're not allowed to enter the intersection. Now, things happen. High-stress situations, uh, they think the lights are on, the lights are not on, things happen. Would they be responsible? They'd still be responsible. Uh, and thin white line interceptor basically says the same thing. They said an investigation will be opened if the sufficient evidence provided proof. Officer caused it. Actually, even if the lights are on, even if we're doing everything right, if we're in that intersection uh, on the red, uh, we're responsible for everything that happens. Someone, uh, Big Bakes wants to know if I'm allowed to stunt drive on my own personal private property. You are not. Highway Traffic Act now includes private property for the purposes of stunt driving charges, and you are not permitted to stunt drive on your own property. People find that very shocking. Why would that be? Well, it's unsafe. And they said, no, no, you shall not. Um, Canada Post parked in no parking zones to pick up packages. Do police usually give leeway? Canada, Canada, what? They're allowed? So it's Canada, so Canada Post parked in no parking zones to pick up packages. So they're in a no parking zone. The immediate pick up and drop off, there is a, per, for anyone, isn't it? For no parking. They're allowed to, on a side street, they're allowed to do it. They get 10 minutes. 
So there's there's rules about this. We'll have to do another parking show with Aaron uh, soon. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> can I use my air horn to get cell phone people to pay attention? Or what can I do? Well, your horn is a legitimate communication device. So, yeah, you can certainly honk the horn because you're letting them know that they're forgetting those rules. Uh, unnecessary loud noise is a thing, but I think it's very necessary to communicate. I used my police siren and horn to communicate with drivers on their phones all the time and then followed up with a pullover. You're getting a big ticket. $615. It's too bad that you can't write that ticket for us. It would really help. Uh, double the limit, yeah. <laughs> Michael says, double the speed limit should be, a danger, should be dangerous under the criminal code. Opinion, not endorsed by TPS when Sean reads it out. Um, actually, there's case law that speed alone constitutes dangerous. Uh, it's absolutely dangerous. So, uh, Can you pass school buses when they stop at train tracks assuming... No, why would anyone do that? First of all, passing on a railway track, how busy or important are you? <laughs> and, I, and I say it with love. Where do you got to go? Is it I got to pee? Is this a, are you been holding one with trouble? Uh, no, you, 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 you just wait. They're just opening the door and closing it. Don't pass anybody. And uh, passing on a railway track is, is really, really not smart. Can I have YouTube open while driving, listening to music, but not looking at the videos? You can only have YouTube open in the background if you pay for premium. Otherwise, you have to open the app while using. Um, if the screen is visible, it's a problem. So if you put it in a way that it is absolutely not visible, the fact that the screen is live doesn't really change anything. But there are so many other options other than YouTube for sound. I would suggest using one of them. But yeah, if, if the screen is not visible to the driver, it's not an issue. So if it was mounted, you know, beside, you can't touch it though to change your music. It's just not a good idea. I've also really seriously considered paying for premium YouTube. I can't believe I'm saying that out loud, but I've actually considered it. Okay. I always try to go to the speed limit. If I notice I'm a little bit over, I slow down to the speed. That's the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to go to the speed limit. If you notice you're high, you're high by a little bit, and if you're not planning on to go, like you, you should have an idea of what the appropriate speed is. If your appropriate speed setting in your brain is that you do 120, 130, this is a problem. It's not okay. Uh, you should, like, like I'll tell you, um, I, in a police vehicle, I'm used to driving much faster because in a police vehicle, I'm doing things that, and I'm permitted legally to go faster. Uh, but I, for what I need to do, and so I got comfortable going faster. In my personal vehicle, not only do I want to save gas, so I go slower, but I got used to going slower, and I go slow. And, I, and, I, and if I'm not paying attention to my speed, I panic for a second. I go, whoa, am I, am I speeding? I look down, I'm usually at or below. So you just develop a, a, a regular thing. This is the first time I've been called grandpa. And I'm sure it's meant as a neg. But my biggest, my big, biggest hope is to one day be a grandpa. So that's cool. Thank you, <laughs> I guess. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Michael says, skilled drivers can go to tracks for racing and stunts. Oh, that's an interesting concept. Ontario Place would be the Ontario Pre. Um, that's very interesting, actually. Instead of a spa, make it into a racetrack. I bet you I bet you people would love that, except for anyone who lives downtown. Uh, because Honda Indy is loud. And Honda Indy is coming up, by the way, uh, 14th, 15th, and 16th of July. And I'm going to be there if all goes well. Everything should be fine. I really hope I'm there. <laughs> we're supposed to have a booth there, and we're just waiting on paperwork. But it's happening. In the, it's in the mix. It's, 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 it's on the way. And I'm looking forward to it. It's a great opportunity to see cool people, cool cars, and meet up with all of you. Okay. Can, a, can you citizen arrest someone for driving dangerously or on their phone? Well... I'm not sure that you know the threshold for criminal dangerous driving, but here is the big thing. It's certainly not their phone. Um, citizens' arrest is for indictable offenses only, and it has to be fines committing. You need to be able to stop them. No, no, uh, no, no, you, you can't. <laughs> it's indictable offense, fines committing. Uh, you want, if you're talking about murder, uh, theft over 5,000, things like that, yeah, you could. Is it a good idea? You need to know the law, because if you arrest someone, uh, and you, you didn't have the authority, I bet you their lawyer will own everything, or they will own everything, and their lawyer will get a commission. They'll own everything that you once owned after they sue you. Uh, dad joke time. Ha-ha. 
My wife asked me to go get six cans of Sprite from the grocery store. I realized when I got home, I had picked seven up. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Cargo CM, can a cargo CMV travel in the carpool lane GTA if there was two of us? So cargo commercial, so the requirement is two people. So yeah, cargo or not cargo, uh, as long as there's no restrictions as to height of the vehicle, you, you could. Two is the minimum requirement for a carpool lane. What are the restrictions of a G2 driver? Uh, that's simple. Uh, G2 drivers have basically unrestricted licenses other than zero blood alcohol content. And in the first year, they're required to have no more than one person, well, in the first six months, no more than one person or passenger uh, under the age of 20 between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. And in the second six-month period of their license, no more than three uh, persons under the age of 20 in their vehicle between the hours of five, uh, sorry, midnight and 5 a.m., excluding immediate family. That's it. Zero blood alcohol content. And those. Can I zip my license plate to the grill of my car instead of the bracket in the front? Yes, you can, but why would you? Get a tow hook adapter. They look much better. Um, I drive in the left lane in city. If I'm turning soon, obvious people tailgating. Just ignore people tailgating. Uh, yeah, they're ignorant. Don't tailgate. That's really an ignorant thing to do. It's also following too close in an offense. Uh, does slow down and move over apply to mobile tire technicians working on the side of the road? It doesn't say mobile tire technicians. It says tow trucks. I don't think you qualify as a tow truck, but courtesy would suggest they really should, even if a ticket uh, isn't something that would be covered under the act. Um, but, it, you know, that's something to bring up. If you guys are out doing that, your thing, maybe, maybe see if you can be classified and included. Why can cops drive while using their cell phone? Not ideal. It is more dangerous than not driving with their cell phone. However, police, fire, ambulance are exempt from the the uh, uh, the act, the or at least the uh, the law that uh, in relation to handled communication devices. Why? I'm glad you asked. Because we're doing our jobs. Because our jobs generally require immediate access uh, to important information in relation to public and officer safety. So it's, it's acceptable use. And they're exempt from their handheld communication devices from cell phone, laptop, and two-way radio. Viva Media. If someone gets a photo of my plate during a road rage incident, what information can they get? They can get nothing. They can make a report. And then the police investigate. We don't give, no one gets your your information on a road rage incident but oddly enough they do uh you know when we they call police and say this person did x y and z um yeah police have access to your information we knock on your door very often how often uh do you get how how long once you get a ticket does it take to show up in the system generally speaking it shows up four days later now if it's if you're talking about the ticket the, the ticket from RN and the police, it's, it's there. If you're talking about in the court system, it's four days. And I'm finally up to date. It's 11 a.m. At least that's the, when this message was. Uh, I'm just scrolling to see if there's anything mind-bending in terms of questions that came in after. I apologize. I, I can't just keep going forever. Uh, I would if I could, but I can't, so I won't. And I'm looking for anything else. Uh, Rodney, I, I see your question, so while I'm scrolling, I can answer it. Uh, can you go anywhere in the city of Toronto to do enforcement? Yeah, uh, police officers can go anyway, anywhere in the city. We don't have a jurisdictional boundary where it says Toronto on our sleeve. We can, we can go anywhere in Toronto. Uh, we can even go outside of Toronto. Uh, my wife told me the robot butler... Oh, uh, I don't know if this is a joke or not. I think it is. My wife told the robot butler to buy a bag of milk. If there are eggs, buy a dozen. It came back with 48 liters of milk. Uh, I tell dad jokes, but don't have any kids. I'm a faux pas. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, that is good. And you didn't need to explain it, but there's there's Michael's explanation. <laughs> uh, the, the bag of milk has three bags inside together, four liters. Uh, there were eggs in the store, so the robot butler bought a dozen bags of milk that have three bags inside, total milk, four liters. Got it. 
All right. We're up to date. We're done. Thank you so much to everyone who spent time with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, I do have the Wednesday and Thursday joke. Dad, can I wash the car with you? I don't know, son. I'd prefer if you use a sponge. Can I wash the car with you? Yeah. Give a man a fish and he will eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on gear that he'll only use a couple of times per year. Actually, I didn't spend that much money. But some people buy boats just to go fishing. A sandwich walks into a bar. The barman says, sorry, we don't serve food here. And one last one for great measure. Uh, Did you hear about the guy who had his left side cut off? He's all right now. Just because I wanted to press that button. It actually wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. All right, folks, here we go. This is the traffic song written and performed by someone who has magic cherries from a tree. Have a good day. See you tomorrow. Light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely helps the traffic flow. Watch for pedestrians, look out for bikes, and don't drive like a jerk that no one likes. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely is the way to go. Put down your cell phone, nobody needs you to text and drive on the DVP. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Stop at stop signs, look both ways, then go. Seat belt, save your life indeed. And watch your driving, don't speed. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely is the way to go. Don't drink and drive or smoke some weed because you might go to jail and not get free. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely helps the traffic flow. Do, 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 do. Awesome. Have a great day. Be safe. And remember, tomorrow we're doing it again, 10 a.m. for Friday. We're going to have Scott Marshall back for a 10 minute. St- you know, quick little visit. But then at 1130, we're doing a full hour, all for new drivers. New, not nude, new. See you then.